Hey there, back again. So for this problem, the statement reads, A perfect dipole P is situated a distant Z above an infinite grounded conducting plane. The dipole makes an angle, theta, with the perpendicular to the plane. Find the torque on P. If the dipole is free to rotate, in what orientation will it come to rest? What we should know for the problem is the electric field of a dipole and the torque on a dipole. Before we consider any calculations, let's first have a conceptual check and draw the situation out. We have an infinite conducting plane, so automatically I think of method of images. How do we set that up for this problem? Well, note that for the image charge, it needs to be the same magnitude and opposite in direction. So all we do is take a mirror image and reverse the direction. That's what we see here in this figure. However, this is not necessarily the easiest way to view the problem in terms of how to set up the torque. Let's redraw it. To redraw it, all we did was rotate the original image and place the image dipole at the origin. Note that in addition to this, we doubled the Z instead of having a plus Z and a minus Z on the diagram. All right, now back to some calculations. So for us to consider the torque on the dipole, we need to have the electric field. This electric field is external to the dipole in question. This electric field now comes from the image dipole, and we can plug that into the formula from our no page. So our electric field of the image dipole is the same as what we had written down previously, but instead of R, we have 2Z. Now for consideration of the dipole in question, we simply just write this in, in vector form, where P cosine theta is the R hat component, and P sine theta is the theta hat component. Now we are set up to plug both of these things into the torque equation, which is N equal P cross EI. Given that we have a cross product, we know we're going to have to do some math. Recall that with cross products, we can factor scalars out. And that's what we do here. In the blue, we have the dipole moment's contribution to the torque. And in the black, we have the electric field's contribution to the torque. In the next line, we factor out the scalars, which you note with the small p is now a blue that's factored out of both. But the vector components are still left in parentheses. Now let's note that in the cross product, cross products distribute across vector addition. So we need to do that twice, one for the cosine and one for the sine. That takes a little bit of simplification, so we break it down into two segments here. And once we do that, then we factor out a scalar once again until we're left with r hat cross r hat, r hat cross theta hat, theta hat cross r hat, and theta hat cross theta hat with the appropriate sine or cosine combinations. If you recall though, a cross product of a vector with itself is always zero. So r hat cross r hat and theta hat cross theta hat go to zero. Also note that in the cross product, we have anti-commutivity, which means that theta hat cross r hat is equal to negative r hat cross theta hat. And that's what we see in the line below. Uh, again, we factored out the scalar sine and cosine, and we're left with r hat cross r hat plus 2 minus r hat cross r hat. And let's recall that in spherical coordinates, r hat cross theta hat equals phi hat. And the rest just simplifies down. We're almost done, but let's recall that the vector has a direction as well. This is uh, can be summarized with the cross notation or the dot notation, where the cross is into the page and the dot is out of the page. So if you note that we have a negative sign with the cross equals the dot. So that's what we'll go with. Let's also note real quick that instead of having a sine and a cosine, we simplified it using the double angle identity to sine 2 theta uh, over 2, and therefore the 8 of the denominator goes to 16. Now that we only have one trig function to worry about, we can see what the effects of changing or varying theta is. So for theta between 0 and pi over 2, the torque tends to rotate the dipole counterclockwise. Meanwhile, if you have theta between pi over 2 to pi, 
the torque will tend to rotate the dipole clockwise. Both of these suggest that the stable orientation is perpendicular to the surface, whether that is up or down.